Now, after managing over a million plus in ad spend, if I were to break it down into three simple steps so that you could be on track to reach seven to eight figures a year for your direct to consumer e commerce brand, what would that be? Well, first of all, it's understanding that areas outside of the business is going to do more for your business than running any ads. Ads is only an amplifier, it only amplifies what your current metrics for your business are. If you really want to scale ad spend and have really cheap CPMs as you spend 10K a day, 15K a day, 20K a day with a strong organic presence, I'm talking if you have a million plus followers on Instagram, you're posting consistently, your engagement is there. You have the luxury of hitting $5, $8 CPMs. How do I know this? We do this for an apparel brand right now. We're spending north of three to 4K a day in ad spend. We're not even in season. And still the CPM is really, really cheap because the brand does a really good job of building engagement organically. So a lot of areas outside of the business is actually going to help your ad spend. It's going to help you increase more ad dollars. So for example, this is creating a no brainer offer, offer stacking with bundles on the front end. So you're profitable building a community which can be hosted on Facebook groups, could be hosted on school, doesn't matter. You want a community with your customers to engage with each other. Now, the fourth thing or the fourth variable in this scenario is having the creative flywheel system intact. Now, ad spin is a direct correlation to how many concepts, how many creatives are you testing? The less frequent you have creatives dropping, the less you can test, the less ad spin you're looking to spend. Now, of course, in certain scenarios, depending on quarters and what time of year, whether we're in season or not in season, it really depends on, okay, do we need a push to get this inventory out or do we have enough bandwidth to create an evergreen offer, right? That's really dependent on your business, depending on your metrics. But if I'm in a scenario where I'm strapped for cash, I want to sell all this inventory and I want to be a step ahead going into Q4, Q1 of next year. Now, this is where the beauty of this game of ad spin is right you can tack on an up to 30 percent off up to 40 percent off on of all of your old inventory you can run a direct campaign sending traffic to a collection page and you're relying on the offer to do majority of the selling vice versa let's say we have new product releases new collection drops well then i want to set up a timeline so that i have creatives a week in advance so that when i do launch campaigns prior to those new releases i can do one or two things i can either send traffic to sign up for a pre-order to capture their emails or I can send traffic to simply put sign up on the email list and then when the actual collection does drop, well then we can run objective campaigns to target those users. That is the luxury of this business and with our structure, with our setup, you're flexible. You can achieve whatever option you're looking to hit within a set timeline because we're set up for success. Now, another variable that's gonna do more for your business. I already covered this, right? It's understanding that ads isn't gonna make or break your business. It only amplifies a uh, second variable that I already covered is, okay, well, we wanna make sure that we time, whether it's new releases, whether it's old inventory, whatever, we wanna make sure we have a consistent seasonal calendar in place so that whether it's we're dropping new collection drops, we can create hype, we can generate demand ahead of schedule so then you can see high revenue numbers on a consistent basis. Now, the third variable is, of course, it's that creative flywheel system, right? I already covered why the creative flywheel system is so important, but without your, the creative flywheel system, how can you expect yourself to scale up ads? So in our portfolio, what we do is we go in, we audit a lot of DDC brands. We look at, okay, what are their current unit economics? What are their current bottlenecks? Is it a front-end issue? Is it a post-click issue? Is it an internal team structure issue? Are they just too diversified? across multiple channels, but nothing's really working. My job is to figure out why brands can't scale with their paid media within the sales funnel. And we're supposed to reverse engineer the sales funnel to yield us to net profit. Now acquiring first time buyers at a net profit is going to require us to hit a gross margin above 75%. We can do this by combining top hero SKUs together, putting a no burner offer. And then from there, pushing down the front end. Uh, the beauty with your skew bundles is that you can raise your AOV and you can incentivize the customer to buy over hundred dollar worth of products, right? With that being said, um, when we have, when we're training customers to spend over hundred dollars with us, we have higher gross margin. 
we create no-brainer offers and then as a byproduct we have more control on the front end right so we're making first order profit and we're giving customers another reason to buy back from our business because we're giving them more than one SKU to test out so that's kind of the beauty behind this and then when it comes to maximizing consumer index i already talked about timing collection drops looking at integrating a marketing calendar having direct communication that's organized between creative and mini buying team studying historical data building iterations to previous offer and then the beauty with raising average order value i already covered different offer archetypes but you can do a buy two get one free buy one get one 50 percent off free gift with purchase and even up to a 30 percent 40 percent off that's what you typically see for black friday cyber monday now the goal behind combining our top hero SKUs together into a bundle is to extend the ltv frequency now of course i know if you push more products on the front end well then there's a less of an urgency for the customer to buy back but the theory behind multiple SKUs on a front end bundle is you're giving customers more of a reason to buy back because they're testing more than one single SKU. Now, there's ways to increase the second order frequency as paid ads amplifies their business. The second order purchases drives holistic growth. So the best customers don't feel like customers. They're simply put brand ambassadors by telling everyone how special the product makes them feel. And then as a byproduct, we can capture that inside a community and build that on a platform like Meta inside Facebook groups, Discord, school, etc. But the goal is if we want to extend our LTV, we need a consistent direct community that's going to yield us content from our existing customers where we can have unlimited rights to testimonials, social proof, direct UGC. Uh, we can even have affiliate expansion, hype up campaigns, prior to collection drops, and even VIP access to unreleased products to drive up exclusivity. Now, the purpose of introducing some of these features benefits towards our existing customers is to establish a direct line of communication between brand and market. Direct insights from our loyal customer base is going to allow us to innovate marketing angles, product features, feedback from the market, while limiting percentage of churn as we establish a more direct relationship opposite to our competitors. So the highest multiple exit stems from the amount of domination in the market. While e-commerce is a single part of the puzzle, there's room for expansion across retail and wholesale distribution. So I know I covered a lot, but I say this to say that's what is required to scale in today's day and age of marketing, right? Especially if you want to exit. If you want to exit for at least an 8 to 10x multiple, you need first order profit, you need a reduction in churn, you need diversification across multiple ad channels, not just one ad channel. Uh, you need to ultimately build a house instead of just relying on outsourcing. And then as a byproduct, it's going to help you expand across retail, across wholesale for that higher multiple exit. So if you're looking to get set up for an exit, you want the protocol, you want the structure, everything I covered, but you just don't want to get burned by ad agencies. You don't want to pay 10, 15, 20, 25 K retainers every single month to somebody who isn't even a part of your team that's where you can check out scalevelocity.io you can read my free 30 page protocol breaking this all down giving you the step-by-step -step process to integrate this yourself and of course if you want to skip the phase of you wasting time you wasting money you can book a call speak directly with me and i can help you integrate this within 90 days or less so with that being said guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions drop them down below and i'll see you in the next one